All right, guys, my name is Shervin. Welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to talk about the average net worth of Canadians by every age. Now, I recently made other videos about the average salary of Canadians and the average savings of Canadians by every age. And while those videos are very useful for you to measure yourself against the average man and see how you are doing, measuring your net worth against the median and the average net worth of other Canadians within your own age group is probably just as useful. So if you watch the end of the video, you're going to find out exactly that. And just to make things more interesting, I'm also going to share with you what net worth you would have to have in order to be in the top 1% of Canadians within the same age group as you. So that if you are doing well and you are above the median and the average, you can still have something to aspire to. But before we get into all of that, if you are new to my channel and you enjoy this video, make sure to smash the subscribe button down below and join the community. I make new videos about personal finance and investing on a regular basis. And by subscribing to the channel, you get to see all my new videos right as they come out. Also, if you enjoyed the video and want to support me even more, then do me a favor and smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. But all right, with all that said, let's get right into it. Now, if you are in your 20s, it doesn't take a particularly high net worth in order to beat the median and the average. And that's because so many people in their 20s are either still in school or maybe they have a lot of student loan debt that they're still paying off. Or maybe they have just got their first job and they're not making that much money just yet. Whatever the case may be, most Canadians in their 20s have either a negative net worth or a very small one. But if you want to be in the top 1% of highest net worth Canadians in their 20s, then you would have to have at least $418,000 in your net worth, which is quite a bit for someone in their 20s. You would have to make a lot of money right away and save and invest most of it. But again, there's a reason why it's called the top 1% and that's because only 1% of individuals in their 20s can make it to that amount. So again, I'm not putting this number up to discourage anyone. Just know that if you have even a positive net worth, chances are you're probably doing better than most other Canadians in their 20s. Now, once you're in your 30s, you will have hopefully paid off a massive chunk of your student loans if you had any. And given that by this point, you've had a number of years to work and earn and save and invest, there's nothing stopping you from having a nice positive net worth. Now, the average net worth of Canadians in their 30s is about $79,000, even though the median is quite a bit lower at $49,000. Now, when the median is smaller than the average, that means that the graph is skewed to the right, which means that there are a small percentage of people who are making a ton of money, which is bringing up the average. Whereas most people still probably have a very modest net worth as they have just started to get better jobs, make more money and save and invest for the long term, and of course, pay off their student loan debts. So if you're in your 30s and you're not above the average, that's not something to be alarmed about. I would say it's more important to make sure you're at least at the median. Because as long as you have a net worth of at least $50,000 or more, you're at least ahead of the majority of other people in their 30s. And if you keep saving and investing on a regular basis, you're going to be able to grow your net worth on a consistent basis for the long term. And at least being ahead of the median in your 30s is a very good foundation in order to build wealth for the rest of your life. But of course, if you want to be in the top 1% of high net worth Canadians in their 30s, you would have to have at least $1.672 million, which definitely is quite a bit to accumulate in your 30s. But strangely enough, I feel like that's not as much as I thought it would be. I don't know, before looking at these numbers, I just always imagined that the top 1% has probably a net worth of 10, 20, 30, 40 million dollars. And of course, don't get me wrong, 1.672 million dollars is still quite a bit and it's very hard to accumulate that much in your 30s. But I don't know, it still feels tangible. It doesn't feel otherworldly to me. So there you go. I don't know if you would agree with me on that or not, but at least for me, that's very inspiring because I feel like that's at least tangible, even though it's going to be very difficult and even though most people are probably not going to make it there. But now moving on to your 40s where the average net worth is $213,000. Now, unlike in your 30s, the median is actually higher than the average at $234,000, which means that the graph is now skewing left, which means that there is still a small percentage of people who are not making all that much. But most people, by the time they're in their 40s, they've had a lot of time to pay off their loans. They've had a lot of time to make money and progress in their career and start earning more and more. And of course, they've had a lot of time to save and invest on a regular basis. Now, if you're in your 40s and you're not close to any of these numbers, then you have to make drastic changes right now. Because chances are you're either not making enough money or you're not saving and investing enough money. Whichever one the case is, your net worth is very low as a result and you're going to struggle to retire in the coming years. So you need to take an immediate look at what is going on right now. Are you not making enough money or are you just blowing it all? 
If you're not making enough money, then maybe it's time to look for other jobs that will pay you more. You can also look into side hustles that can get you paid a little on the extra. I don't care if it's driving an Uber or whatever, just as long as you're doing something to earn a little bit more money on your off hours. And of course, you can also look into starting a business on the side that can potentially lead into a profitable business that you can make money from. Now, which one of these you decide to do, it really depends on you and your situation. So I would just say, trust yourself, do whatever you have to do and just get your income up as much as possible. But on the other side, if the income is not the problem, then you're probably spending way too much and not saving and investing anywhere near enough. So make sure to do the adjustments. I have a full video about how much you need to save by every single age. I'll leave a link to it right here. So if you need some guidelines, feel free to check that video out. It'll give you some points as far as how much you need to save by every age in order to have a nice and comfortable retirement later on. And of course, it's not just about saving for retirement per se, it's about having a strong financial position so that you have a lot of freedom and flexibility later on in life. So that then you can decide if you wanna work, how much you wanna work, or where you wanna work. So again, if you're far behind these numbers, make sure to do the adjustments right now before it's way too late. And of course, if you wanna be in the top 1% of high net worth individuals in their 40s, you have to have $3.761 million, which is a little bit more than double what the threshold was in your 30s. So again, even though it looks like a big number, it definitely is not unattainable for those who have a high salary. But of course, only if you are saving and investing a big chunk of your salary and not just wasting it all. Now in your 50s, the average net worth is $452,000 and the median net worth is $521,000. Now by this age group, you're very close to retirement, you've been working for a long time, and hopefully you've also been saving and investing for a long time. And particularly if you've been saving in long-term investments like the S&P 500, and not just panic selling anytime the market dropped and just holding for the long-term, by this point, you should be seeing the fruits of your labor. Because once you've been invested into the markets for 20 or 30 years, you should be seeing a lot of compound growth which basically means that your net worth will be growing exponentially from here after. And again, if you wanna be in the top 1% of high net worth individuals in their 50s, you would have to have $6.687 million, which is again, about double what the last one was. Now, once you're in your 60s, the average net worth is $545,000 and the median net worth is $690,000. Now, again, by the time you're in your 60s, you've probably already retired, which again, doesn't necessarily mean that you're not working at all. It just means that you have the freedom and flexibility to decide what you wanna do and how much. But of course, for the top 1%, money never sleeps and you're never done working because you would have to have $10.03 million in order to make it to the top 1% in your 60s. Now, that is a huge number and probably the number that I would have guessed if you had asked me, how much money do you think the top 1% has? But turns out that's just for people in their 60s. And if you're in a different age group, you don't have to have anywhere near that much in order to make it to the top 1%. So just a bit of inspiration for you guys out there. And in fact, if any of you are anywhere close to any of the top 1% that I've mentioned, then I salute you, well done. And for everyone else, if you are ahead of the median and the average for your own age group, then you're doing very well. Keep up the great work and let me know in the comments how you're doing so far. But that's about it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on Instagram. I post there regularly. So if you wanna be a part of it there, make sure to follow me there. Also, if you have any questions about any of the stuff that we talked about in this video, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. I always respond to every single question that comes in. And with all that said, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.